Hello and welcome to this um, free live webinar from Proposals for NGOs. Today we will talk about the fundraising strategy for your organizations and how you can develop a fundraising strategy to be more successful um, in your overall fundraising. Yeah, my name is Eva Wieners. I'm from Germany. I've been working with Proposals for NGOs since we've started this website. Um, I have been working in the field of fundraising basically for the last 10 years, I would say. I'm a geographer and um, just about to finish my PhD. And I have worked in um, Ecuador, in Europe, and for the last seven years, um, my focus has been in Nepal. So I have experience in Asia and South America and Europe um, and have been fundraising for many different organizations. I have done a lot of trainings and um, yeah, done a lot of research um, about foundations and um, the fundraising landscape out there. Yeah, really excited that um, so many of you joined us today for this live webinar. Um, you can type comments or questions in the YouTube um, comment bar. I think it's on the side of your screen. If there's any um, technical problems, any issues, if you can't hear me, if you can't see me, just uh, let me know. And um, we have um, our staff helping us um, with managing comments. Maybe we can just um, wait for another minute and see um, if you can see me, if you can hear me, can you just type in a comment in um, the comment box so that I can see um, and if it's working out, if the system is working. I'll just wait. <laughs> Maybe in the meantime, I can tell you uh, a little bit about proposals for NGOs. Um, one second. So we are a, a homepage, an online based company. Um, and our topic is, as the name says, proposal writing for NGOs. So we provide um, resources, articles, trainings, um, resource guides on everything related to proposal writing. And um, this is basically what we do. We have free articles. Um, we have started to develop online courses and um, we have resource guides on our webpage and we do live trainings um, at the moment in Nepal but we will branch out into other countries at some point as well. Okay, so I see one comment at least. So I think the broadcast uh, must be working. <laughs> I hope you can all see and hear me. Again, if there's any issue, if you can't get a connection, just type in a comment and we'll try to fix it. We'll try to help you through it. Um, but for now, to me, it looks like it should be working. So yeah, we can get started on talking about the fundraising strategy and why it is so important um, and why you need one. Oh, perfect. Now I see from Madhu um, that you can hear me, you can see me, so we can get started. So I will switch to my PowerPoint presentation now. I hope that also works. Um, yeah, and then we can talk about the topic that you all came here uh, to listen about. So the topic today is, um, let's see if it jumped up. Yes, everything worked. The topic we are going to talk about today is how to develop a successful fundraising strategy. If you've joined this webinar today, I'm sure you work uh, for an NGO, you work in the field of fundraising. Mm. And um, yeah, you're interesting, interested in how to um, enhance your fundraising, how to make it more effective and how to um, become better at it. So um, the first step um, to become better at fundraising is to have a strategy. Um, many NGOs um, sometimes um, 
don't put enough attention to that because they think, oh, we can just get started. We can just uh, get things done quickly. But having a strategy is actually very important to be successful in this field. Because once you have a strategy, you become much more effective. Um, and yeah, you can um, use your resources in a much more effective way. And many fundraisers uh, have the problem that uh, they do many, many things. They have great ideas, but um, it's not really effective. The things, uh, the results um, that you can show for later are not the ones that you um, want to see. So this is why you need a strategy. Um, today, in this uh, webinar, we will talk about what a fundraising strategy actually is. I will share um, a little bit about my personal experiences with you, where um, I come from, and um, where um, yeah, my experiences come from. Then we will talk about why your NGO needs one, because it's more work. Now, if you have to develop another strategy, if you have to develop another document again, maybe you will think or maybe your seniors will say, oh, well, but why should we make a workshop for that? Why should you spend time on that? So we'll talk about why it is necessary that you have one. We will talk about who should develop the fundraising strategy in your NGO, who should be included in the process. Um, and in the end, we will talk about how to develop it, because that's the thing that you came for to understand. Uh, what do you have to put in it? Uh, what do you need to um, develop a fundraising strategy? So to start with the basic thing, what is a fundraising strategy? We all basically know what a strategy is. It's um, a document or something that you develop to get from one point to the other. In the context of fundraising, the fundraising strategy is a document that details your strategic plans for fundraising in your organization. It is based on your business plan. So the important word here is strategic because many times um, NGOs, especially smaller NGOs, approach fundraising in a very unstrategic way and then it's not very organized and that always leads to um, losses in resources and um, resources not invested very smartly. So you have to think about the whole process in a strategic way. What exactly do you want to achieve and how do you want to achieve it? And does it all fit together? The fundraising strategy also has to be based on your business plan. And that is also very important to keep in mind because um, also if you see many fundraising efforts uh, from NGOs, you will realize if you look at the whole organization, um, you will realize that sometimes they're not connected to the business plan. So then that results in um, yeah, activities that um, are not really contributing to the overall mission or vision of the organization. Then sometimes projects are just implemented because there's funding for them or there's a lot of resources poured into a specific way of fundraising without a clear connection to the overall um, objective of the organization. So um, your fundraising strategy should be um, based on your business plan. Uh, maybe you're not calling it business plan. Maybe you're calling it theory of change. Maybe you're calling it um, your mission or your vision document. But you should have something in your NGO where you map out, um, where you're very clear about what you want to achieve, how you want to achieve it, how your different projects fit within that strategy, within that business plan or theory of change or whatever the name is that you're using. Um, and your fundraising strategy should be based on that document to make sure that everything you do is streamlined um, and is following the specific um, objective or the specific goal that you want to achieve with your work. Otherwise, things become disconnected and you will get very fragmented um, work. It's um, This sounds very obvious, especially if you have just one project, but um, when you have a little bit bigger NGOs or um, when projects develop over time, sometimes it becomes very disconnected. Um, and you always see that when you try to um, yeah, match the fundraising strategy with the actual um, mission of the organization. And then you realize it's not working and it's more um, an opportunistic approach instead of a strategic approach. So this is what a fundra what fundraising strategy is. And here I want to talk a little bit about um, my own 
fundraising story, my own history, how I came to do fundraising, how I came to work in this field, and why this helped me so much to realize how important a fundraising strategy is and the, um, yeah, a strategical approach to this. Because I, um, when I was 19 or 20, I um, finished my high school. I went to South America to work in different projects. And after that, um, I went to Nepal and also worked in different small projects. I'm a geographer, so I come um, from, I, I also studied agriculture, so I come from the field of natural resource management, basically. I worked with farmers, I worked with projects, and they were all great. Um, we had amazing ideas, we had um, so many things we wanted to do to benefit the farmers. And um, I was the main project manager, so I was supposed to manage all the project tasks, and I was supposed to also um, cover for finances. And I think many of you are in a similar situation. If you're working in a bigger NGO, maybe you are the sole fundraising manager, but many times um, the tasks of, of project manager and fundraising um, responsible person are mushed together so that you have those two responsibilities. I was very excited to work. I had a lot of energy. In this picture, you can see some of the farmers I worked with um, in Nepal. This was a reforestation project and they received plants and everything was exciting and great. But over the course of time, I realized that I was spending more and more time on fundraising and not very successfully. So we always had the problem that we had a great project and then it ran out the grant we had was finished and we didn't have any follow-up funding. The farmers were disappointed, um, the beneficiaries were disappointed because they wanted to continue. We were not able to tell them exactly when and how. Um, then sometimes um, things changed, regulations changed, and we just had one funding source and um, then we couldn't um, benefit from that funding source anymore. It was also just very stressful. and. Um, yeah, the bigger our organization got. In the beginning, we had one small project and it was fine. I was able to um, get funding for that quite easily. We had some very limited projects that um, needed one-off funding. That was also okay. But then the more we grew, the more complicated our programs would get. And um, yeah, the more complicated it was to um, actually get long-term funding. And also the more time I spent actually sitting at my desk trying to figure out what to do trying to figure out um, what our next steps in fundraising should be and not spending any time in the project anymore, not doing the actual project work because I was just so occupied with constantly trying to figure out what to do next. And after um, some time in this stage, I realized what I was missing or what our entire organization was missing was a fundraising st strategy. Because of course, if you have a good fundraising strategy in place, uh, it's not magic. It will not magically give you funding um, from one day to the next. But what it does is it maps out how you will go into the future. Because our mistake, and my mistake in that time, was that I was always just planning for the next year, for the next couple of months, for what, what are we doing now? What can we do right now? And that is not how strategic planning works. If you um, plan ahead and if you know, oh, okay, now we're fine, but next year we want another project, so we need more funding. Maybe in two years things change. We need to renovate our offices. We need to have an emergency fund. If you plan into the future and then figure out ways how to achieve these goals that you set for your organization or for your project in the future, um, it is much more easy to follow through on these plans and um, to do them in the long term instead of always reacting in the short term. And also, once you have a strategy and write these things down in a document, assign responsibilities, you free up your mental space for other things. Because um, it, it just uh, occupies so much of your space, if you, in your, of the space in your head, if you always have to think about what will I do next? What, um, how can I figure out the next steps? So if you have a strategy in place, um, all this goes away because it's written down somewhere, everybody knows their role, um, and people will act by themselves. And I realized this for myself, because once we implemented, once we discussed about um, a fundraising strategy, we um, had a much better idea of how to move into the future. I didn't have to constantly think about this, I was able to designate specific time slots towards fundraising, 
but the rest of the time was free to do the work I really liked again. And I think this is a problem that many fundraisers face. And this is why we think it is so important that we start um, our series of webinars with the fundraising strategy, because that is the base for all the work that you want to do. This is why I like this quote so much, be a proactive fundraiser rather than a reactive grant seeker. Because um, when you do this kind of work, when you work um, in, in, the, um, in social work, when you implement projects, um, you don't want to be passive. You work with beneficiaries to um, become active, become actors um, in their lives. And this is something you should do with your NGO as well. If you proactively think about what you want to do in the future and how you want to achieve all these um, goals, all these objectives, and then act on it um, and set goals for yourself, you have much more control about where your organization is going, where your work is going, what you can achieve and how you can achieve it. If you just passively, um, reactively yeah, receive things, um, you're not in an active position. You are not the person or the, the actor deciding things. Somebody else is deciding for you. And that is exactly what um, a business doesn't want and what um, at the same time an NGO doesn't want because you want to be the actor and you want to be, um, yeah, the person um, making the decisions. And having a fundraising strategy is the base for that. Because if you have a strategy, then you know what you have to do. Then um, you act before things happen to you. And you can determine um, the course of the future for your organization. So um, we've talked a little bit about why it is important. Because it... Um, yeah, it makes you the active um, party. It makes you decide what to do and it makes you more prepared for things that can happen in the future. So which questions should the fundraising strategy answer? What should be in it? What um, does it mean to have a fundraising strategy? The first um, question the strategy should answer is basically where are we today? Where is your organization with um, it's fundraising today. Of course, this is the fundraising strategy, so it is focused on fundraising. So we're not talking um, about um, staff or just the project work, but where is your fundraising today? Where do you get your money from? Uh, how did you get these contracts, these grants? Um, how, did you get, how did you get your current fundraising? So in the first part of the strategy, you um, describe the, the current situation and um, how things are working out for you at the moment. In the second part, you talk about where you want to go. So um, you have to determine what your fundraising needs in the, let's say, coming year, coming two years, coming three years are. It's very important that you determine this because only if you know where you want to go, can you decide on how you will get there? If you have no plans for the future, if you have no idea what you will do in the future, then it's very difficult to determine um, what fundraising needs you have. So that's why um, we also said in the beginning, it needs to be based on your business plan or on your theory of change or on your um, operations plan for the next um, one, two, three, four years. Um, so once you decide, okay, in the next two years we want to um, implement a specific project or a specific program, we want to build a school, we want to build a community center, whatever it is, um, there's always funding needs connected to these projects or to these actions. Or even if it's something um, smaller, like um, we need to renovate our building or we need to um, pay a big tax um, or whatever it is, you need to define the fundraising needs or the funding needs that you will have in the future so that you know where you want to go and how much funding you will need in the future. Because only if you have a specific number here, you will be able to determine strategies on how to get there. And this is the third part of a good fundraising strategy, that you decide how you will get there, um, how you will achieve those um, goals that you determined in the second part. Those are different strategies that you can use there, um, different ways 
uh, of, of getting there, of um, yeah, strategies that you can use, ways that you can get funding. But it is very important that you determine them um, in the strategy in the third part. For this um, entire process, it is very important to keep in mind that the grant cycle or the fundraising cycle is a cycle and not a linear process. So um, if many NGOs approach uh, fundraising more in a linear way, so they think, oh, okay, we have, we want to do a project or we have a project, we need money. So we will find somewhere to apply. Uh, we apply there, we get the grant, we write a report, we're done. But if you approach fundraising this way, you will always end up um, with gaps because then in the end, um, you reach the end point of um, the grant, the grant runs out, maybe you can get an extension, but then you have no money. So the project has to end. If you think of it that way, if you think of it more as, as a cycle um, than a linear process, then you will always, um, be on the lookout for new opportunities. You will always um, be on the lookout for future opportunities. And that will help you immensely in um, making your fundraising more sustainable and having um, yeah, a more sustainable approach towards your, um, your project work. Um, sustainable meaning that you have long-term funding, that you can um, extend projects, that you can keep working on them without um, having a break and without having to worry about them all the time. So the parts of the grant cycle are, um, this starts at the top with the research. So first you have to research where can you get funding. Um, this is a very, can be very extensive this project uh, process because there's so many donors out there nowadays. So you have so many possibilities, but only few of them will be a good fit. So um, you have to do research to find the perfect fit um, and to find the, um, the donor that you can apply to. Don't just um, apply to as many as you can, um, but really choose good ones, choose ones where you have a, a fighting chance because only that way um, you will use your resources um, in an effective way. The second step of the grant cycle is to prepare prepare a proposal um, or prepare through networking, connect with the donors, just be ready um, to submit something. If, the, if um, the donors you found in your research step have an open call, you can um, of course send an application, whatever they're asking for in that call. If they have um, no open call, then you have to try to network with them, send them a cold email, request a meeting, just somehow get in contact with them and um, get your foot into the door so that they know you, that they would be interested in reading something from you. And um, that, yeah, you can start talking with them and that they um, you start to appear um, on their radar. The next step is to apply. So you've prepared your proposal, um, you've talked to the donor, they, they said yes, send something over. So then you apply with your concept note um, your proposal or whatever they um, request of you. And then if you're lucky, you get the grant, you get the money, you get what you wanted, um, and then you come to the implementation stage. So you implement your project and um, you start doing the work that the donor chose you for, that the donor is paying you for. So um, after or even um, during the um, the project, you evaluate. And this in this case, in the grant cycle case, it doesn't mean you evaluate the project, but you evaluate your fundraising cycle, your fundraising process. Of course, um, this cycle also works for a project. No, you um, research, you prepare the project, um, you get the funding, you implement the project and evaluate it. You also have to do that, but right now we're talking about the fundraising. So in this case, um, you um, evaluate how well the fundraising worked. Was this the right channel? Um, was this the right way to do it? Was it effective? Did you get what you needed? Um, could you do something different? Do you want to do it again? Uh, whatever. You evaluate the process. So you don't wait until 
you finish the pro uh, the project, evaluate the project, and then evaluate your fundraising, you do that way before because you don't want to wait until the project cycle is finished and then start over. You want to do that earlier so that you never come to the position that you have a funding gap. So you evaluate what was good about your fundraising, what was not so good, what can you change, um, and then you go back to the research step and do it all over again and do it again and again and again. And that is the important thing to keep in mind, that it is not linear. It's not something you do once and then you're done. Of course, if you have a one-off project, you want to build one thing and then your NGO ceases to exist, then it is linear. But if you are aiming for a long time um, work, if you're aiming for programs, if you're aiming to have a bigger impact, you will always need to um, do this in a circle or in a cycle. Do it again and do it again. And it doesn't have to be um, in this order always. Sometimes you will have many different of these cycles um, working at the same time. Now, maybe you get one grant, but at the same time, you're networking with a different donor um, to get something else, and you're researching at the same time. But it is important to have it all um, in a strategy, to have um, your steps lined out that you have to do to get there, and to always um, keep looking for new opportunities to um, extend your fundraising, maybe not all extend in the sense you don't always have to grow, you don't always have to get more money. If, if you're happy with the money you have, that's very good as well. But you should always um, look out for other possibilities to get this money, to have a more stable strategy that is on different pillars and not only rely on one funding source. But we'll talk about that in the next step a little bit more. So this is the grand cycle. It's very important that you keep in mind that it is a cycle. Um, yeah, going back to the question why you need a fundraising strategy again, we've talked about this a little bit already. But the most um, important thing is you need the fundraising strategy to avoid funding gaps. Because if you don't have a strategy, like we said before, you might um, have the situation that you uh, run out of funding and you don't have anything else lined up and then a project ends and this can be quite dramatic um, if it's like a hospital or a school or something like that if you run out of funding throughout the um, project or even at the end and you don't have any more funding you might have to close down and this might have um, very dramatic influences um, on beneficiaries so you have to try to avoid funding gaps at all costs um, so having a fundraising strategy and always thinking ahead and not reacting, but acting, um, avoids these gaps. Having a fundraising strategy um, will also put your funding on a much more stable base because you know what will happen. You're not constantly surprised by things that happen on the outside, but you know what will happen um, to your organization, to your fundraising in the future. And um, it is much more stable for you. You can um, plan ahead. You can be more confident in the work that you're doing and in the way you're planning ahead. Um, and you will be, um, you will have a more sustainable approach towards your project. A fundraising strategy is also very important to um, map out tasks so that everybody in your organization knows who has to do what and when. Because um, specifically when you work in a little bit bigger organization, but even if it's just two or three people, uh, misunderstandings always happen. One person thinks, oh, the other person is going to do that. And they think, oh, no, but um, person A already did that. And in the end, the task doesn't get done. So even if you know um, what you have to do, if you don't map out who is going to do it and when it needs doing, um, things will probably still not get done. Um, it's just human nature that um, nobody really um, wants to do all the work at the same time. So um, people wait, no, maybe the other person is going to do that. And as long as it's not clear, things will probably get lost in the process. So the fundraising strategy is the place in your organization where you can exactly um, tell who um, needs to do the things and when. So you put a deadline to it. Um, you put um, 
time steps towards all your actions so that you know um, you can define milestones, what you will have, what you will need to achieve at a certain point um, to implement your fundraising strategy. And then if it doesn't happen, then you will notice that uh, something went wrong, that you will see that there was um, a roadblock and you can fix it. So um, that is very important to implement a successful strategy. And like we said before, it's also very important to free up mental space for other tasks. Because if you always have to worry, if you always have to think about um, where is my next money going to come from? Um, can we pay our stuff next month? Um, do we have to end the project? Do we have to change the project? Do I have to just um, work harder or something like that? If you constantly have to think about all these things, if you constantly have to research new opportunities and write and jump here and jump there, then um, you will not have the mental space for other tasks. One more reason um, to have a good fundraising strategy is also to not miss deadlines anymore. Because uh, if you don't have a strategy and you just maybe you do some research at some point, then maybe your colleague does some research, you might miss many important opportunities in your field. But if you have um, this all mapped out, and if you know, okay, at the beginning of the year, I do like a week straight of, uh, of um, research for donors. And then you know all the deadlines throughout the year. And then you will not miss them anymore. You will have enough time to properly prepare for them. And um, yeah, that is going to help you because otherwise you might um, stumble over something, but it's already the deadline has passed or it's too short term or um, for other reasons you're not able to um, apply there. So this is going to give your organization, your fundraising much more stability. Um, and yeah, will put you in the situation where you can look out to the future and um, where you can be much more successful because you know what you're doing and yeah, you have a plan that will support this. So now we will talk a little bit about who in your organization should develop the fundraising strategy. Like I said before, um, tasks that have no assigned uh, person to do them normally don't get done because um, it's just human nature that we sometimes avoid tasks if um, they're not specifically assigned to us or if we are not in charge. So especially if you work in, in a team or with more people, um, it's important that you know who should do what, and it's the same for the fundraising strategy. Um, I would say it's very important that you develop the strategy in a team. If you work in a team, of course, if you just work by yourself, um, then you don't have a team, you, then you can't discuss it with anybody, but it's still good to run your fundraising strategy and your ideas by um, some other people. And um, if you work in a team, it is um, important that you discuss it in the team because like we said, it should be based on your business plan. It should be based on your theory of change and everybody should be on board with it. Because if you just decide by yourself, oh, I wanna apply there, I wanna apply here. Um, first of all, you don't use all your resources because other people might have different input that you can use. And um, secondly, maybe they're not agreeing and then they will not support you with every strategy, with everything that you um, thought of. So it's always good to discuss this in a team. Um, if you have meetings to discuss your business plan or to discuss your, your mission statement, you could just add it there and say, okay, in the morning we discuss about our business plan, in the afternoon we develop a fundraising strategy to determine how we want to um, actually get there. So make it a team effort so that everybody's on board. Everybody should be in the loop uh, to be clear about roles and responsibilities as well. Because um, it is important that everybody knows what they have to do and um, what their their tasks are. If um, you determine that someone has to do something but you don't inform them, they're not in the loop, then um, that is not helpful at all. So everybody needs to be clear and you need to share with everybody um, what they have to do, what their next steps have to be. You should also try to make sure that everybody, and especially your seniors, um, 
understand the importance of developing a fundraising strategy and also assign resources towards it. Because many times um, I see that people are very hesitant to pay any money for anything related to um, fundraising. The, um, there are some resources that can help you when you develop a fundraising strategy or when you develop um, when you work on actually implementing your fundraising strategy. You can buy access to databases. Um, you can get trainings. You can um, get online trainings. You can um, get the help of a consultant. And um, many NGOs are hesitant to do so because they think of it as a cost. But you should always think about um, think of um, money you spend in fundraising as an investment because if you spend it in a smart way, it will come back. It will um, you will be more successful in your fundraising, and that will mean more money in the long term for your NGO. But of course, um, if you're a fundraiser, you probably already know that. Um, many times, though, um, the seniors in an organization are not so clear about it and are hesitant sometimes to pay um, money or to um, yeah, allocate any resources to it. Also, um, they are more happy to, resor to allocate resources like your time or even like meeting space um, towards actual tasks from the strategy. But sometimes they don't understand that it is important to also have this underlying strategy to have everything lined up and to streamline everything um, according to your your business plan your theory of change um, and to have everybody on board so um, sometimes it might be the first step that you have to convince your seniors that this is important and that they actually need to be willing to spend some time on it or some resources some money sometimes to be more successful So now we get um, to the meat <laughs> of this presentation, how to develop a fundraising strategy. Because uh, we've talked about the importance, we've talked about what it is, um, how you can use it, but how can you actually develop it? So the first part, as I said before, is that you have to determine where you are today. Where is your organization's fundraising today? So where do you get your money from? Again, this sounds very... Um, simple and like common sense but um, every time we do this exercise we realize that sometimes even fundraisers don't exactly know where the entire budget is coming from because it's not always from grants many times it's a mix of different um, funding sources that ngos have so for example one part is membership fees um, sometimes you have private donors sometimes it's grants sometimes it's government support sometimes it's um, subsidies many different things so just map out where all your money comes from and um, where you are with your fundraising today does it is it enough um, do you have gaps what worked fine in the in the past what didn't work so well um, in the past and what do you have to change so the first step to develop a good and um, yeah cohesive fundraising strategy is always to have um, a lot of good and accurate information about the present because um, the um, I was just looking at a question sorry <laughs> um, I will get uh, to a couple of questions in the end so now I'm just going to continue with with the presentation I think um, yeah, it is important to have exact data on where you are today, not just estimates. So don't just um, say, oh, I think this grant was most and there's a little bit of membership fees. Try to get the numbers and be as specific as possible so that you exactly know where your organization is standing today. And from there, you can move on. So in the second step, you have to determine where you want to go. Um, this is very... Um, depending on the plans that you have for your um, NGO, for your project in the future. So this um, part really has to line up and really um, needs to be based on your business plan. So what are the pro plans for projects in the future? What are expenses um, that are looming in the future? Is there, for example, um, going to be a change in the tax rule? You have to pay more tax. Um, is your office falling apart? Do you need to buy new computers? Do you need to um, buy anything else um, in the near future? Um, do you have to um, have more staff? 
things like that. No, you have to plan correctly into the future because um, if you don't know what you will need money for, then you can also not get that money. So you need to have very specific plans um, and determine your fundraising needs for the coming um, months and ideally for the coming years. So um, be clear about that. And may, sometimes this requires that you do long-term planning um, for your entire NGO in your business plan. Maybe you're not doing that yet, but that is always a good idea because if you plan, um, you will always be more successful. There's a lot of research in the field of businesses and startups, and all the research says that um, businesses that plan ahead are always more successful because, like we said before, once you have a plan and you act on a plan, then you are active. Um, if you just react, you're reactive um, and you will never be as successful. And the same is true for the NGO sector. If you plan ahead, um, you will be much more successful in your work. Of course, you can't plan for every single eventuality. Some things uh, might not be possible. Some things might change. Um, but it's still always better to change a plan than to have no plan at all and just react um, when something happens in your field. And then the last part um, of the fundraising strategy is how do you want to get there? So how do you want to achieve um, the fundraising goals that you defined in the second part? How do you want to get that money? There's different strategies that you can use. Um, first, you have to determine um, yeah, how um, you want to get this money. Do you want to apply for more grants? Do you want to enhance membership numbers? Do you want to start a social enterprise and maybe get money um, for your project work? Do you want to rely on government funding? All these are different um, ways that you can get money and that you can um, include in your fundraising strategy. It's just very important um, that you determine which way you want to go because otherwise your research will also be very undirected. And again, you will miss out on resources that you have because if you choose to um, enhance membership numbers, you need to include your members and maybe have them do some um, promotions for you um, get more members on board or stuff like that, but you need to include people. You need to know what to tell them so that they can help you with the strategy you chose. If you want to apply for grants, then you need to research grants and stick to deadlines. If you want to work with the government, maybe you have to um, adhere to specific um, requirements by the government that will need some time to um, adhere to. So if you have to apply for a specific um, tax code or something like that, all of this takes time and preparation. So you need to be clear on what exactly you want to do and um, how this will help you to get where you want to be. And again, you have to um, be specific about who will do what in this um, process, because otherwise, um, things will still not get done, even if, you bro if, you, if you've broken up the tasks um, to the most possible level. One very important thing you should do and you should determine um, in your fundraising strategy is to try to diversify your funding sources. Because um, if you only rely on one funding source, then of course the risk of that funding source to break away is very high, um, or the risk for your work is very high. Because if you um, have one a donor and suddenly that donor decides to change their focus or something else happens and you lose that donor, then you lose everything. But if you have different funding sources and one donor agency or one donor breaks away, you will still have the others to fall back onto. So this is also one of the goals that your fundraising strategy should have is to diversify because um, a diversified um, funding sources also diversify the risk that you have. Um, your risk is much lower to lose everything at the same time um, and your work will be more stable. Because if you, again, if you know that you have different funding sources, the probability that all of them will fall away at the same time is much lower and that will give you your planning more stability and will give you the ability to plan longer into the future. Um, you should also get familiar with the funding landscape, maybe even a little bit before you do, um, you prepare the fundraising strategy because you want, will want to um, 
you will want to know what is an option for you. If you already know that for your field there's almost uh, no government funding, then it doesn't make any sense to include this um, into your fundraising strategy. If you know that there's many, many grants, then maybe that is a better strategy. If you already know that um, you will have volunteers and members of your organization who want to support, then maybe that's the best strategy for you. Um, so you can do some research before um, the meeting, before you determine your fundraising strategy to have an idea, not to, not too detailed, but just to have a, a general idea about the funding landscape and what could be options for you and what would be the best fit for you. You can um, answer to calls for proposals. Um, so that is a next step. Once you have determined exactly what you want to do, that could be one option. Um, and you have to network with donors. Those will be tasks that you have to um, determine in your fundraising strategy. So you will have to write a work plan that includes um, different activities um, and within these activities, different tasks that people from your organization have to do. If you're a fundraiser, many of these tasks will fall to you. The research, probably networking, um, writing the proposal, these tasks will probably um, mainly fall to you with support of others. But there's many tasks that, for example, board members can help you with, volunteers can help you with, because especially um, during the networking, they can be um, of great help. And when you compile all of this information um, and have a work plan at the end with deadlines for the specific tasks, then you already know exactly what you have to do in the coming months um, to secure the fundraising needs that you have defined in your fundraising strategy. So this document um, will give you a lot of um, insurance of what you have to do in um, the future to actually achieve your goals and to put your work on much more um, stable feet. So now, if you developed, you have developed a fundraising strategy, um, you decided which channels you want to use, um, you have evaluated your past strategies, you have decided, okay, this, um, it works very well for us to um, recruit more members, it works well for us to apply for grants, um, our benefit um, ball, our benefit um, event last year didn't make so much money, so um, we will drop that. We will focus um, on specific things. Then you have to put it into a work plan. Um, so you have to say, OK, we want to apply for grants. So um, Janet will do the research uh, for grants out there. Um, Ian will um, then start networking with them because he has so many connections. Um, then we will write a proposal. Then we will do this. Then we will do that. You need to put it into a work plan so and break it up into small tasks and assign responsibilities for these tasks because then everybody knows um, what they have to do and then things will get done. It is also very important to assign a budget to these tasks because all these things cost money. Even if it's um, just your time, we sometimes we talk that way, but time, um, I mean, it's a, a very old saying, but I think it's true, time is money. Um, in the sense that your working time is worth money. So even if you don't have to pay actively something, if you work on something that is a resource spent, so you need a budget. You need your seniors to understand that these things take time, that maybe you will need money as well, because there are some tools that can help you throughout the process, um, but that it is a good investment, because if you learn how to do these things, if you have the resources um, to do these things within your organization, um, that is um, an asset for everybody because it will be beneficial in the long term, even in the short term, um, because once you learn how to do donor research yourself, how to network, how to write a proposal, um, you will have these resources within your organization and um, they will be very useful for your organization in the long term. Yeah. and. You have to share this document with the people who need to know with your entire organization so that everybody knows what is the plan, how do you want to approach um, the future, how um, do you want to implement your fundraising strategy, and how is the fundraising strategy connected to your theory of change, to your business plan. Again, it is important 
that people know what they have to do. So you have to share the work plan. You have to tell people exactly what their role is and make sure that everybody is clear on that. So the next steps that you have to do are probably research, donor networking, sending proposals. Um, if you have chosen to go with a grant um, strategy, otherwise maybe you have to recruit more members. Um, you have to think about a business plan for your social enterprise, whichever strategy um, or with whichever um, approach towards fundraising you chose, these will be your next steps. Um, and you will have them all written down in your work plan if you follow through with this system. We also know that um, these next steps can be very overwhelming and very complicated, especially if you do it for the first time. So um, we at uh, Proposals for NGOs have developed an online course to deal with them. Um, Today in this uh, free webinar, we've talked about the fundraising strategy and the importance of it. But like I said, once you have the fundraising strategy, this basically just um, lines up more tasks for you to do, more tasks for the fundraiser and for the team to do. So um, if you decide to go with the um, approach of trying to apply for grants, which is, um, I would say, one of the most common fundraising um, approaches because um, it can also be very, very effective. Then you have to do donor research. You have to find um, the, the perfect fits for your organization. You have to network with them to make sure that they already know you, that you have a foot in the door. You have to figure out um, if a call is really for you and you have to write a winning proposal. So um, as we've seen in the last um, decades working in this field, so I've been working in this field for, for around 10 years, um, Eric, my colleague, for over 20 years, and we've seen countless proposals and we've seen so many NGOs struggle with this. So um, we've decided to develop this course to address all of these problems because we think um, that so many NGOs have amazing projects and amazing potential to implement these projects. They're just sometimes lacking the tools to um, find the funds and to do the fundraising themselves. Um, but we also don't believe in um, having um, consultants do the fundraising for NGOs because this is um, something that you should develop within your organization. Because if you pay a, um, a consultant to write a proposal for you, then um, maybe they write a successful proposal, maybe not but the knowledge doesn't stay within your organization. If you in your organization learn how to um, develop a successful proposal yourself, then um, this stays with your organization or with you forever. And this is a, a resource um, that will be useful in the long term. So that is why we um, developed this online course that we want to present to you today. Um, this course is very extensive. It's a five week course that includes five modules um, that cover all the important aspects of fundraising. So um, the first module in this course is about the fundraising strategy as well, but um, it's more expensive than the, the webinar we did today. Um, we have a workbook with many questions that help you, um, that guide you through the process of developing your fundraising strategy. Um, so it's more extensive. Then we have one entire module on donor research one on donor networking, uh, one on the question of eligibility, how you can figure out if a call is really a good fit for you and um, how you can find clues that donors give you in the guidelines. Um, and of course, um, we have one module on the writing the proposal itself um, because of course you need a, a very good um, document on um, a very good um, proposal document as well to be successful. All these modules have a video where um, Eric and me share our inside knowledge. So we've been working in this field for a long time. We've seen many things. Um, and we also know the most common mistakes most NGOs make. So we will talk about them. We will talk about how you can avoid them um, and how you can um, work around them, how you can make your proposal shine and be um, that one pearl um, within the pile of stones that um, sometimes uh, donors get. You will get more than 70 pages of supporting materials, cheat sheets 
um, for every um, module where you can see the most important points on one page. So if you're in a hurry or if you just want to get an overview, that is very helpful. Then we have included um, samples of successful proposals and concept notes, which is also very helpful. Of course, you can't copy them, but um, you can look at them and take them for inspiration um, and learn from successful um, examples. We have templates for different parts of the proposal and the fundraising process. So we have a full proposal template. We have many emails, how to write a cold email to a donor to get um, a first contact how to write a grant extension letter, how to write the right cover letter, cover page. For all of these things, um, we have templates that you can use and work with. At the end of each module, we have a quiz that you need to pass. So we, that's, we included this because we, we want to make sure that you really understand um, what the modules are about. We have homework assignments um, that help you um, to apply the gained knowledge to the project you're working on. And one of the very special features this course has is access to an exclusive Facebook group where you can discuss uh, with peers. So um, all of the people who take the course become member in this Facebook group. And if there's any questions, if they prepare a proposal, if they work on a call, and if they have a question, um, they post it there. We are in this group a lot. So we answer questions, but also other people who um, took the course, who work in this field, answer questions. And many times this input is even more um, valuable than our input because these are people, these are fundraisers who do the work today and who are in the field. So everybody's always very happy to share experiences and to share insight. Um, and a, a copy of the ebook, the NGO Guide to Proposal Writing, is also included. So this is just um, an impression of how it looks like. Um, we have course videos where um, this is a picture of Eric. Um, so Eric does this in some modules and um, I do this for some. Um, we explain the inside scoop, common mistakes and things, um, some, just some tips how you can shine with your proposal and how you can make it very special. Um, then we have downloads, we have the quiz and we have text material. Um, that also helps you to really get um, a detailed understanding of the different modules and what is important and um, what you can use for your NGO um, and how to implement all these strategies. We have cheat sheets where you, that you can see there. It's a one pager that you can just print out um, if you need specific information. And we have the Facebook group. So you can see um, people can post their questions. Um, and then there's always a big discussion um, happening. No, people um, tell their inside um, views on things. Here, there's just one discussion about when um, when to focus on um, on topics. If if you should um, align your NGO strategy more towards funding opportunities or more towards um, beneficiaries, basically. Um, so we have different topics. Some are focused only on the course, um, but some are more broad because people can come back to this group um, when they're working on the next proposal, when they're working on the next project. Um, so this is really a great resourceful group um, that we use for exchange with you. So um, today you participated in this uh, webinar. So I think you already have a little bit of an idea of the kind of content that we share. Um, because you participated in this webinar, and um, that already means that you have interest in this field, um, we want to offer you a very special um, offer today. Because normally we sell this course for 199 US dollars. The actual worth of the content of the course is much higher. Um, we calculated one time, we stopped at uh, $2,000 because all the content we're sharing, all the information we're sharing with this extensive um, experience that um, Eric and me have is worth much more. Um, this um, Facebook group is really, really useful um, because um, it gives you access to so many people that have a lot of, lot of knowledge in the field. Um, so we decided, okay, we can't sell this for 2000 because we want people um, to benefit from it. We are still sure that people would, would buy a course um, because it's really, really useful. Um, 
but we decided to sell it at 199 because we want people to have access. We want NGOs, especially small NGOs, to have access to this information to make um, their fundraising more successful and to be more successful in the field because in the end, we want to see you succeed um, because we are sure, we are convinced um, that you all have amazing projects, that you have the energy and the possibilities to change the world with your projects. Um, so we want to support that. So we decided to sell the course at 199, which is already a great price. But today, um, because you participated in this webinar and we want to give you the opportunity to really get um, this knowledge and to be able to use this for your NGO and for your work, we're selling it for 40% off, so $119 only. This is really a great price for all the information that you will get in this course. Um, and like I said before, you should try to see things like that as more as an investment, because if you um, use this information, if you follow through with the homework, um, if you work through the workbook um, exercises, you will have um, a fundraising strategy after this course. You will exactly know what to do. You will know which donors to contact. You will have researched contact persons at the donors. You will have sent um, 10 or 20 even cold emails to donors. You will have established connections with them. And you will have a first draft of a proposal that you can use um, and tailor to donors' needs after that. So yeah, the content is really great and it will be very, very helpful for you. Um, and we are 100% convinced that this can turn around your fundraising completely um, if you follow through with all the exercises. I personally would have wished that this would have been available when I started fundraising um, because it, I know it would have helped me greatly and it would have uh, saved me a lot of time and a lot of resources that I spent uh, Googling around, searching for things myself, trying to put the information together. Um, and it was just never as effective as um, this course would have been. So um, we just posted the link uh, for this offer in the comments. So if you're interested in this, um, this offer is going to be valid until Friday only. So it's just today's Wednesday. It's just two days um, that you can jump on this offer at 40% off. Um, so I understand if you need to talk with your seniors um, or ask if this is possible. But I really recommend this because um, it's going to be an investment in the future of your organization. It will help um, your fundraising to be much more stable. Um, and it will help your organization in the long term to um, establish this knowledge within your organization and that you can always do it in the future. So we just posted the link um, to this offer. You can also, um, you will get a copy of this presentation um, by email. If you want to watch it again, if you want to watch some um, passages of it again, and you will also, of course, get the link to this offer. But remember, it's only valid until Friday. Um, so you have to jump on it quickly if you want to take advantage of this um, extra price that we offer for this webinar. Um, if you think, oh, this sounds interesting, but I'm not sure, and 119 is still too much, we have also split up um, the course into five modules, into five single courses. So every module is also um, um, open for purchase um, on the um, individually, sorry. Um, so if you think, okay, I already know, now I've listened to the fundraising strategy webinar, um, I already know how to do donor research, but I really need more information about writing the proposal. You can also purchase um, only the proposal writing module individually. All these individual modules we sell at uh, $50 only. So you can go to our school page. Um, you will also get the link in the email um, and uh, purchase these at uh, 50 only, $50 only. So you get, um, yeah, you can make, um, you can get an impression of how the modules look like. And if you decide after that, um, that um, you want to have access to the full course, you can get, um, you can still get access at a discounted rate. Um, not as much discounted as we offer today, because this is really a special offer that is only valid for two days, um, but still at a better rate, because we want to honor um, the fact that you already um, trusted us with one module. I always recommend the full course because it's a much better deal. Um, and 
in fundraising, it is important to approach things holistically um, and look at all the aspects and not only at one aspect. But if you feel like, oh, I just need um, a refresher, I just need some support in one of these areas, um, then you can also purchase these um, modules as single courses. Yeah, so this is the information I wanted to share with you today. Um, now we have some time for questions left. So I saw there's a couple of questions already um, in the comments. So let's just let me find them. So um, Renu asked if one strategy works for one funding agency or organization. So um, it depends a little bit on the size of your organization if you need one strategy or different strategies. Um, so if you um, have very different programs um, and projects, then I think you need different strategies. Um, of course, you can try to put this into one document, but um, it uh, can be a little bit overwhelming. Sometimes also different teams are responsible for different projects and thus also responsible for different fundraising strategies. And sometimes it makes a lot of sense to follow very, very different approaches for different projects. For example, if you have, um, if you want to build a school, that is something very um, expensive. And for that, you probably need um, maybe government support, maybe a grant, um, big money. But if you just want to sponsor a class going on a field trip or something like that, you can also go for crowdfunding. You can um, talk to people a very different way. If you have one project that has a very emotional component, yeah, crowdfunding or private donors can be a solution because you can easily reach them. But um, if it's something very technical, um, then you will need very different um, sourcing for that, uh, funding for that. So. Um, you might, sometimes you will need um, different um, different funding, um, fundraising strategies for different uh, parts of your project. You can still uh, put them in one document, but maybe you have to develop them in different steps because they will have a very, very different um, focus and approach. I hope that answers your question. Um, if you have, um, all of you that are still watching, if you have more questions, uh, you can type them in the box and I will try to get to them um, in the remaining, let's say 10 minutes. Um, yeah, I would love to answer more questions if there's anything. So uh, Amrita asks, uh, why is fundraising so difficult for small, small grassroots NGOs? Um, the problem is that sometimes, um, Donors only want to work with bigger NGOs, also private donors um, want to work with NGOs that are already established, that have a working history. So it can be very difficult um, for grassroots NGOs that have just been established, um, and especially if they're very small, because um, donors want to have a specific size of organization and also a specific number of years that an organization has been established. Um, of course, this is something that you have to take into account uh, when you develop your fundraising strategy as well. When, when you start out and when you're very small, sometimes it makes sense to rely more on things like um, yeah, private donations or um, membership fees, even, even if it's a grassroots NGO. If you collect a small membership fee, um, then that can already um, add up to something. And that you um, yeah, include strategies that are appropriate for your kind of work. Some donors um, focus on working with grassroots NGOs and giving small grants, so they can these donors can be a very good um, entry way into this world of of um, grant um, writing. For example, in many countries, in many developing countries, um, embassies give small grants that and embassies mainly want to work with grassroots NGOs. So this can be something um, that um, can be very useful if you. Um, try to find calls from embassies or specifically from the owners who want to give small grants as well. And this, this can be an entryway, but it is a little bit difficult, especially in the beginning. But if you keep this in mind, also when developing your fundraising strategy, um, 
you can still get funding and you can still get started. And sometimes um, grassroots NGOs even have more credibility because they are close to the beneficiaries and they really know um, what's happening on the ground. So some donors are even more happy to work with them. Um, then another question from Reno, uh, fundraising strategies differ per country and per cause. So how to deal with this issue? Yeah, this um, refers back a little bit to what we said earlier. Um, of course, different projects um, and also different countries need very different approaches because not everything works for every country and not everything works everywhere. So some in some countries um, you get tax exemptions, so foundations fund in a very different way. Um, some um, countries have restrictions on receiving money from abroad. Um, so yeah, it depends, of course, a lot on the country, um, which fundraising strategy you want to follow, and also on the project, because not everything works uh, for every country. So um, you have to develop different strategies, and you have to do a lot of research to find out which um, strategies, which approaches are good for the, the kind of project you want to implement. So in our course, we also give a lot of information about research strategies, about how to find the perfect fit um, donor fit if you decide to try to um, go with grants but on the um, level of strategy yeah first you have to decide which um, approach which way of getting money is the most appropriate um, for your circumstances and they, that might differ if you um, work in different countries if you work with very different projects and of course there's no one fits all um, strategy you always have to change the strategy to the um, circumstances and um, to the uh, system that you are working in with your NGOs. And then there's one question from Risti. Uh, where can I get information on donor funding? Um, there's not really one place where you can get that. It's the whole research process. So in the course, we have one entire module that focuses on research and, and how can, you can get this information and where you can get it. Because there's some tricks that make it easier. Um, it's not only Google. There's many other things that you can use to get this information. And we share um, the inside scoop on this with you in the course. But there are some databases that you can use. You can also um, follow our page, Proposals for NGOs. We share information about opportunities. You can subscribe to our newsletter, um, and there's a lot of information on that. There's other opportunity pages and databases that also give this information. Um, but you need to search around a little bit. If you um, subscribe, if you um, join our course, you will also get a resource guide on um, donor research that has all the important links to get this information. So that is also very helpful. OK. I think those are all the questions for today. Um, yeah, I'm very happy that you all joined for this webinar. I hope this was helpful for you. I hope you learned something. Um, and I hope to see um, some of you on the inside, see you in the online course, because there we share much more information, much more details, and um, really help you to develop these um, strategies, these things for your own organization to um, lift your fundraising to another level. So I hope to see you on the inside. I hope to see you in the course. And if you have any more questions about the online course, um, about this webinar or anything, um, let us know by email or in the comment window here. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel as well so you don't miss any more webinars um, for the future. And thank you very much for joining. I hope to see you again next time. Um, yeah, and I hope to see you in the online course as well. Bye-bye. <laughs>